Welcome to The Mental Breakdown. I'm Dr. Bernie Wilkinson, and today's podcast is all about helping you prepare your child for the start of school. I even have a special guest today, Miss Cassie, who will be joining me in just a few minutes. But before we get started with that, just a few housekeeping notes. As always, I'd like to remind you of our books that are available on Amazon Kindle, The Handbook for Raising an Emotionally Healthy Child, Part 1, Behavior Management, and The Elimination Diet. Both are available on Amazon Kindle for immediate download. Uh, they're great resources for uh, looking at behavior uh, in your child as well as looking to see if their diet or what they're eating on a daily basis may be contributing to some of their physical, emotional, behavioral uh, challenges. So those, those are great resources that you can get on Amazon Kindle uh, for immediately immediate download. Also, the Parenting Your ADHD Child course is available on PaideaLLC.com. The links to the books as well as the course are both all available on the uh, or through the show notes. You can click on them there and check them out. Great resources. The, the, the Parenting Your ADHD Child course is a great um, tool for parents to use to build skills and to help uh, structure and uh, make their home much more consistent and, and uh, re- reactive and, and adjusted to the needs of uh, a child, children of all ages, but especially children with ADHD. So you can go on to the uh, paydllc.com slash courses website and look at the course outline and see what all of the different lessons, there's about 20 or so of them, what all the different lessons have um, available to you for not only to watch immediately once you purchase the course, but you're, they're available to you forever. As long as the internet and WordPress and all those things are, are available, that course will be available to you. And that includes when we add more resources in the future. So it's a great investment, great opportunity for you to um, get a course that just never ends because we're going to continue to add things to it. So check that out. All right. I think that's all the announcements. Pretty quick today. I hope you enjoy this podcast all about getting ready for school because... Ready or not, here it comes. So, enjoy. Welcome to The Mental Breakdown. I'm Dr. Bernie Wilkinson, and I'm so happy to have with me today, Miss Cassie. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Miss Cassie. Good evening. Now, Miss Cassie is joining today for a very specific and very fantastic reason, and that is the fact that school for most students is starting back within the next couple of weeks. And I know that many of you listening or watching right now don't know this, but Miss Cassie was a school teacher for a number of years. How many years were you a teacher? Uh, nine. Nine years. Mm-hmm. It's a long time. Uh, so she was a teacher for nine years, and she's going to, I, I asked her to help out with this podcast because uh, this podcast is all about getting ready to go back to school. How do we get our kids prepared? How do we, um, how do we get everything set so that we can have that great first day of school so that the, the entire school year uh, is set off on the right foot? Absolutely. Everybody wants a good first day. Absolutely. Right. Um, so... Miss Cassie uh, agreed to join me today so that we can talk a little bit about um, about starting off the school year on a positive foot and um, helping our kids get ready. Okay. All right. So I, I think the first thing, Miss Cassie, that many people want to know, um, I think that even students really want to know, mm-hmm. and that is parents and, and students know how they feel the first day of school. How, how does it feel as a teacher for the first day of school? Well, the first day of school, it's, there's always kind of a mixed emotion about it. I mean, of course, our summer's coming to an end. So, you know, that kind of is a bummer. But then there's always the excitement of, you know, meeting a whole new class because you spend a year with them. You spend 10 months with them. And so it's always really exciting to meet, um, you know, the students that you're going to spend that, that, that amount of time with. You know, and, and I think that from talking with with you and, and some other teachers, I think that's something that many students don't really understand is that mm-hmm. teachers are often just as nervous that first day of school than yeah. students are. Yeah. I mean, students are meeting one new person, mm-hmm. the, the teacher, mm-hmm. 
teachers are meeting 20, 25 new students. Right. When you get up to the middle and high school uh, classes, you know, some of those teachers are meeting hundreds oh, of I students for the that. first time. That's a lot of students. That's a lot of students. So, um, so yeah, the that first day of school is, is that mixed emotion of excitement and nervousness and sure. um, that engagement that we mm-hmm. all all feel, and, and students feel it just as much yeah. as and it's as a teachers. fresh start. It's you know, if you look back and you kind of you know reflect on the year before, you you already have ideas in your mind of what you're going to do differently and and how to make the coming year better. Like any good teacher, I think, and would hope would kind of have those ideas running in their head, kind of a running list of things that you can do to make this coming year much better. Right, right. That's that's a great... That's a great point, and um, hopefully teachers are doing that because mm-hmm. you know it's I know that when important. I teach when I teach classes, one of the things I try to do is you know I see what worked in th- with this group of right. students, and I try to improve it with the next. Uh, as a teacher, you have you have ten months worth of, mm-hmm. of class material that you adjust and shift right. and, and fit to meet the students' needs. So right. fantastic. So well, when with school starting within the next week or two, mm-hmm. most kids are going to be, um, most schools are going to have orientation. Mm -hmm. Now, from your perspective, I know that a lot of parents kind of, uh, there there are those parents who are like at every orientation, Mm -hmm. and then there are those parents who, you know, I'll just get the school supply list from, you know, that little kiosk thing at Walmart. Right. Um, is, is orientation really an important thing for students to attend? I think it is. Um, I would always encourage parents and students to come out because, for, for the child, I think it's a moment for them to kind of see their new classroom and their surrounding, meet the teacher, and, and it just creates a less stressful kind of first day for them. They're not walking in blind and not knowing who to expect or what to expect. They have some idea of, you know, what their classroom is going to look like, where it's located. Sometimes children go to a new school, a new campus. Right. Um, and so it just makes it less stressful for them. Um, as a teacher, I always like to meet the parents and let them, you know, talk to me if there's any like medical issues um of course you have the parents who want to talk about behavior issues yeah. and i always have to take that with a grain of salt because right. i want to give each child a fresh start a new year without kind of all of that background information right you know right unless it's anything you know pretty severe right um and so i just think that it's a good a good way to have a quick meet and greet and kind of take some of the stress away from them and me as well right right so. yeah you, you certainly don't want to start out the year with um preconceived expectations yes. based upon a child's experiences with a previous teacher or in a previous setting because right. there's so many factors that could play into that. Right. And and just because they had, you know, maybe an, a, a not so positive year the year before doesn't mean that they won't have a good year with you. Right, right. So. Now, I was I was talking to a parent the other day that had a wonderful experience. Her, her daughter's just starting kindergarten and what their school does is instead of just a, a single evening orientation, mm-hmm. uh, what they'll do for the kindergartners is they have them come in several nights in a row, oh. and they'll spend an hour or two at the school in the classroom. That's really cool. Um, just to get the kids acclimated to the classroom, right. get them used to the teacher, used to the environment. They'll have them. They'll even have the parents after the first um, thirty or forty-five minutes or so. The parents will leave them in there, so they're left with the teacher to you see what's going on, what see how to concept. mention. Concept. I think that's yeah. great because I mean. Kindergarten is such a huge transition Absolutely. for kids. So I think that's a great idea. It's tough, yeah. So mm-hmm. um, so with once the parents get to orientation, they know where their classrooms are, um, what what can parents begin to do, and, and maybe even begin to do now before orientation even, what can parents do to prepare their kids for that start of school, to get that transition, smooth that out a little bit? That's a great question. I think one of the biggest things that parents can do for their children, and then of course children have to, you know, be ready to do that as well, is cut the sleep pattern. They have to get back in, because through the summer they're, you know, way off, staying up past midnight, yeah. playing Pokemon Go. Yes, they so are. They, so they really <laughs> need to get back into, you know, that kind of regimented schedule where they're going to bed at a certain time, you know, waking up. A lot of kids don't get up till noon and they're not right. eating. So, you know, getting in back to the routine of waking up and having something for breakfast, just getting ready for that because, you know, it, it's going to be here before you know it and there's right. no more time to catch up. Right. So yeah. I think that's the biggest thing to get ready is back in, back into that routine of sleep and and and, and being more rested. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I was um, – we're, we're recording this on an evening after a full day of patience mm-hmm. and everything. And 
you know, we've talked to patients throughout the day to day and, um, you know, some, of the, some kids are staying up until two or three o'clock in the morning. They're sleeping until one or two o'clock in the afternoon. The first day of school for most kids in, in our area here dramatic. is is in seven days. It's, yeah. it's a week from today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, we, they don't have a whole lot of time to mm -hmm. get that s schedule shifted back. Yeah, and I think that's, to. That, that's really important, yeah. especially for little guys. You know, I was taught in elementary, and so on the first day, you have lots of yawns and, and kind of laying on the desk, and, yeah. and it's tough. Yeah. It's really tough. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of kids, I think, that after the first couple of days of school, they always come home and take a nap because <laughs> that first couple of days wears Teachers them do. out. <laughs> That's great. Um, now, one of the things I often recommend to, to my families is, um, you know, is trying to get them on a routine as far as, okay, we're going to, for the next week or so, we're going to try to eat at particular times sure. and we're going to try to start reading before mm -hmm. bedtime. Is that something that you think, would help them with that transition? Absolutely. And I think, too, just to kind of go over, like, what the expectations are as far as homework. Yeah. Um, and start looking at your environment and, 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 and kind of thinking, like, what's going to be more conducive for that. Like, if they're sitting at the coffee table in the living room doing homework and the TV's on, like, that's not... Not going to work too well. No. So yeah. they, you know, start thinking about those things. And, and, and parents, like, what the expectation is, you know, is it come home and do your homework right away? Or is it come home, maybe take an hour to relax, chill, hang out, and then do homework? You know, you, those things need to be clearly stated and kind of in the know. Right, right. So going ahead and detailing that schedule, that yeah. after school schedule. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also always found it fun to, you know, going out and getting school supplies. Mm -hmm. You know, that was always something yeah. that I really enjoyed doing because, you know, getting that new backpack mm -hmm. and new folders and everything, yeah. that's always that. Nothing so gets you in, this, in the yeah. mode of school than a new backpack. Yeah, and new shoes. Duh. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about new shoes, but the backpack, man, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, the Pokemon Go backpack <laughs> with the, yeah. Um, now, what about things, are there things that parents should avoid? Like they, they should stay away from, um, you know, as they're preparing their kid for the, for the start of school. Right. I think the only thing that I would, could recommend was just to not be so negative about it. I mean, I've had students oh, yeah. come in and say, you know, my mom said I can't get a bad note home or I'm going to be in trouble or, you know, just kind of start it off on a negative. Yeah. I mean, negative, a positive, uh -huh. you know, build it up, make it seem like a fresh start. And, oh, you're going to get to learn so many things this year and just be very positive, not so negative. That That's a that's a great point because, you know, I, I think it's um, it's sad to me when, you know, I'm talking to a, a, a kid or um, I'm talking with a kid and, and his parent. And while the kid's sitting there, the mom or dad says something like, you know, I can't wait until school gets gets back so that mm -hmm. he can, he'll get out of my hair. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, know, you're, you're looking at... How do they internalize as, that? How do right? they take that in? Yeah. You know, school is now seen as this negative that, you know, well, this is my punishment for being annoying to mom mm -hmm. as she's sending me to school. And so we start conceptualizing school as this negative thing. Right. It's, no, we want, right. we want school to be a positive thing. I, you know, I, I always tell the kids that I'm working with, yeah, I, I love school. There's so much, yeah. so much to learn. You know, certainly there's many things that we have to learn that we necessarily don't want to right. learn, but uh, but there's so many things to learn. You have to maintain that positive attitude. Yeah, Because, I mean, absolutely. If, if mom and dad are at home and like, oh, I can't wait for you to go to school and you've driven me crazy this summer, they're yeah. going to they're gonna take that to heart. Absolutely, absolutely. It, I, I think the same thing when we, when we talk about bedtime routines mm -hmm. Um, you know, how many times do parents put their kids in timeout and timeout is laying in bed mm -hmm. or uh, they get in trouble. So they, okay, that's it. You know, I'm tired of you doing that. Now go take a nap. Well, mm -hmm. now you're associating a punishment with going to sleep. And so that night when you're trying to get your kid to go to bed, he's going to resist going to bed because he's going to associate getting in trouble right. with punishment. going to bed. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we do the same thing with school when we talk about it negatively like that. So we need to you're right. right. We need to stay positive about it. Right. And another thing that I think that I kind of noticed with, with my students is the whole hygiene aspect. Yeah. Maybe they're a little more lax in the summer and kind of getting into those routines of brushing your teeth every day and taking a shower every night or in the morning, whatever your routine is. Um, that's, I think, a hard thing for kids to get back in the groove of. Yeah. No, I didn't even think about that. That's a, that's a good point. Um, you're not saying that just because you're sitting close to me. No? <laughs> no. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, so speaking of that, though, what can, what can kids be doing? What, what, what should the students themselves be doing? If we have any students listening or, or watching uh, this uh, podcast, 
what can they be doing to get ready for school? Again, I can't stress enough sleep. Yeah. You know, getting back into your routine, going to bed at a certain time, getting up at a certain time. Um, just kind of getting yourself mentally prepared for school mm-hmm. and, and, and homework and knowing that that's coming and um, just kind of getting back into the groove of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we underestimate the amount of time that it takes to shift back into a good sleep yeah. routine mm-hmm. and a good schedule. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, kids, if you're listening, go to bed. Please go to bed. <laughs> so, um, all right. And, um, you know, I think that one of the goals that we've sort of has been at the under undercurrent of everything that we've talked about is is sort of generating some of that excitement for school. Yes. You know, there there's so much to do. There's so many new things to learn, so many new things to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, trying to foster that excitement yes. in kids is really important. I agree. It's very important for a, su- a successful year. Yeah, yeah. And and if you can start out the year um, with excitement, you know, mm-hmm. usually you can build on that throughout the year. Mm-hmm. So even when things get a little bit challenging, even when things are a little bit difficult, mm-hmm. you can use that initial excitement as a way to um, recharge the batteries a little bit. Well, remember, you know, you're taking this class th- this year and, and in that class, remember the teacher said at orientation, right. you guys were going to be doing, you know, this or doing that. And so um, you can refuel some of that, Absolutely. that excitement. Absolutely. So... All right. Any other advice or any other suggestions that you would give um, parents or students? Not that I can think of. Just try to encourage your students. Uh, One thing I would like to say um, that I think is very important as the school year begins, um, I know it's not always feasible for parents to sit down and do homework with their children, but I think it's very important if you can Mm -hmm. to sit down with them and do homework just to show that you're invested and that you're interested and you know, if they're having, if they're struggling with it, that you try to help them in any way you can, just to know that you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, so many times kids will return the next day and say, I couldn't do my homework. My mom wants at home to help me or she wouldn't help me and went there. She was, you know, cooking dinner or whatever. So if you can just sit down with them and I think that will kind of help transitioning into that schedule and, and help, help them to know that they're not alone in that and in mm-hmm. whatever struggle that they might have. That's, that's a great point because it, when a parent sits down with them, it, it normalizes the, yeah. the process. One of the things I'll recommend to, to parents sometimes is while the, while the child's sitting down and doing some homework, for them to sit down and do some work as well, whether sure. it's um, doing some bills or um, doing something else where they're sitting down and doing yeah. paperwork as well, because it, it normalizes that process of sitting down in a structured right. routine setting and, mm-hmm. and doing the work. So, yeah, And I think it just reinforces, you know, um, that it's important and it's something that needs to be done because regardless, you're probably going to have homework every day. Right. So I think that that's important, an important piece that I think parents should be aware of. Yeah. And, and the reality, parents out there who uh, may not be ready for this yet, <laughs> um, homework starts in kindergarten now. Yes. So so yes. you're going to, your, your kindergartner, your sweet little five-year-old is going to be expected to, to start reading and, and doing simple math and uh, depending on the school, maybe even doing book reports this year. That's that's another podcast. I like it when she says that because that means that she's going to do another podcast with me <laughs> about about that issue because that that is a huge issue. Yes. Um, and and that we usually put that podcast uh, th- that talk about those topics on our Paydia podcast, mm-hmm. um, which has had a little bit of a hiatus. But um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna. Uh, double post this podcast in both for both because um, it's such an important issue. So, um, all right. I think that's all for today. Yeah. Um, parents, students, teachers, here comes school, ready or not. Yeah, have a great year. That's right. Have a fantastic year. Um, it's going to be great. Let's make sure that we started out uh, as positive as possible and um, let's, let's do it well. Let's do it. All right. So until next time, I'm Dr. Bernie. I'm Cassie. Have a great day. Have a great start of the school year. And as always, forget to be afraid.